Hello, <laughs> I'm Ben Collins with Believe in Bristol, and today I'm with Michelle Plesha with uh, Bristol Ballet. She's the artistic director, and I'm going to ask her a few questions. So, thanks for meeting me today. Thank you, Ben. All right, so we're downtown at your new space. What's the address here? 519 State Street. 519 State Street. All right, so uh, tell me a little bit about what's been going on at the ballet lately, and uh, what's been up? Uh, we moved to this new space from our lovely studio in, on Cumberland Street um, a year and a half ago. Okay. We acquired the assets of Ballet Arts Academy when their director retired. And actually, this is the space that she was in. So, um, our lobby that we're filming in now had used to be a retail dance wear store. And we decided that the customers, our parents, would enjoy a nice place to wait for their children. So, luckily, all our furniture worked really well in the existing decor. Um, and then we have uh, a small dressing room this way and two lovely studios on the second floor. Okay, so if a parent wanted to bring their uh, daughter down here to start ballet, like, what's the process like? We actually have a website, bristolballet.org, okay. that will give information about our class schedule, our tuition prices, um, and also will feature different events that are going on. We have an online registration that you can do there, but certainly if you have questions, you can also email us through the website. Okay. And if the questions are too lengthy, then just leave some contact information and we'll call you back and kind of get started from there. Okay, awesome. Okay, and uh, you have like events that are open to the public too throughout the year, right? Do you have uh, performances that... We do three major productions a year. Um, in December we do The Nutcracker, full-length production of The Nutcracker. In the spring we'll do a different kind of production. This year we're doing the Ballet Coppelia. It's a story about a toy maker. Okay. It's charming and fun for all ages. Okay, is that date set for that second one? Yes, it's April 5th and 6th this year. April 5th and 6th? At the Paramount Center for the Arts. Okay, okay, what's the third one? And the third one is our annual student concert. So that, the first two productions are only our company members. Um, and they are admitted into the company by audition. The last student concert involves all the students at the school. So, from okay. ages four and up. Right, it's a blast. It's also a tradition uh, here in Bristol, having a ballet organization. Um, so, I mean, there's been some changes, but is, it, is there like a continuity between um, uh, where the ballet group was founded, I think, think 75 years ago? or 65. 65 years ago. Uh, so there, is there kind of a constant chain from then to day, today? Oh, I would think absolutely so. It's always been very classical ballet focused. Uh -huh. um, certainly I encourage my dancers to uh, learn other genres, but we are basically a ballet school and company. Mm -hmm. um, and we pride ourselves on tradition and excellence in classical ballet training. So, so what does it mean uh, to be downtown? like? I think it's great and appropriate. Uh, it, it seems like it's just part of our downtown, is having the ballet organization. And, and what does it mean to you, like, just to be here? I love being here. Um, even now, when we were on Cumberland Street, we still tried to be part of the downtown community, but being here, right in the heart of things, is real exciting. Um, to be right across the street from Paramount, to be in the middle of downtown when everything, all the different events that Believe in Bristol um, helps promote um, or actually produces, we like being part of that. I will say it's a little bit more responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, to be a good downtown citizen, we want to participate in as many things as we can, and that uh, adds a little, a little to my list of things to do, mm -hmm. but we are happy to be part of it and, mm -hmm. and actually like being part of that heartbeat. All right, well, a very important question is, is how do you um, get your funding? So tell me a little bit about um, moving forward and how you plan to, to raise money to keep the program alive. Uh, that's a very good question. We are a, 
501c3 not-for-profit organization. So um, we, we get revenues from tuition, from ticket sales, but also um, from fundraising. So we rely heavily on donors, contributors, and um, revenues that we get from fundraising events. It's real important. Without those fundraisers, we would not be able to meet our budget. Do you have an annual fundraiser, or, or how does that work? We actually have three different fundraisers. Okay. Um, we have one in the spring that's actually coming up, but I don't have a date yet for it. Okay. Um, it's called Silver Coffee, and that is steeped in tradition. Okay. Um, I'm, for as long as I know, the ballet company has had this type of fundraiser, and it's geared toward women. We ask someone in, with a home in Bristol to, to host, mm -hmm. um, so someone very graciously opens their home, and we bring food, finger food, snacks, um, mm -hmm. and serve coffee and tea. So it is a, a coffee um, held from like 11 to 1 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. And uh, certainly men are welcome to come, but it's, it kind of started as a tradition with um, the women in the community, okay. meeting women in the community. Okay. Um, so we ask uh, a certain number of women to be hostesses, and they pay $100 and have their name listed on the invitation as a hostess. And then other attendees, our recommended donation is $50, but we will welcome any donation at all. Okay, okay, so very grassroots. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know if it's just a Southern tradition, but it sounds yeah. very Southern. Yeah, it does, that <laughs> sounds like a lot of fun. So, so, okay, so just keep your eyes out for fundraisers to help the ballet, and uh, for events coming up, uh, everyone should be checking Believe in Bristol's website, as yes. well as yours, uh, to keep abreast of new developments. Um, is there anything else you'd like to add for the people that might be watching this or learning about you for the first time? Uh, actually, yes. As you had mentioned early on in the interview, this is our 65th anniversary. Mm -hmm. And we would love for anyone who has ever been a student or a company dancer to send us information about them. What are you doing now? When did you dance with us? If you'd like to send a picture. Um, we're also having a reception for alumni. Um, April 5th, Saturday, April 5th, prior to our first performance of Coppelia. So um, we're looking for people. We can, I can certainly remember a lot of names of people I danced with because I grew up with Bristol Ballet. Right. Um, but I don't always know how to get in touch with them, and I certainly don't know everyone who was here. Right. So, so this will be like a celebration of, of your alumni and who you are today and how it's all connected, and it should be a really memorable event to, to bring all those folks together. Right, right. And all those things and stories, so that's really interesting. I think it, it hopefully will be a whole lot of fun. It's, um, there are, I don't even know how many alumni, you know, we haven't really made a list and counted, but it's in the hundreds. So if we could get just a little, even a small showing of people, just how proud we are to still be here after 65 years. All right. Well, great. Well, thank you so much for that. I appreciate the time today, and it was great to talk to you. This thank afternoon. you very much. Ben. Thank you.